this is the one, guys. This was the one I was extremely looking forward to in the year of 2017 when it came to shows in general. Narcos Season 3 is back, and I binge-watched it in one day. It's 10 episodes. It's... uh, after the fall of Pablo Escobar, it is absolutely... Does it hold up, though? Does it hold up as much as season one and season two? Because I, I've said it all along. Out of all the Netflix shows I've seen over the years, I think Narcos is the best. So season three is kicking off about... We got a new cartel. We don't have Murphy no more. We just have uh, Pena. And he's kind of like the head of the DEA. Uh, We do get a couple new characters here and there uh, helping him out as well. But the biggest threat here is the Cali cartel and they're smart they're a smart bunch man they're made they're definitely a lot more cool-headed smarter than Pablo Escobar yet things still turn as of course all things must turn when it comes to running drugs and all that stuff I mean we if you know the history you already know what's going to happen for me I don't necessarily know the history of it so for me it was like Seen definitely not knowing what kind of surprises were going to come out of this. I got to say, though, the one thing I had a problem with this this season was that there wasn't necessarily a big presence like Wagner Mora's Pablo Escobar. Wagner Mora absolutely killed it with Pablo Escobar. You felt that presence. You know, you even had Gustavo. You had a lot of characters in that first two seasons where you kind of really just like felt the presence of the acting, felt the presence of the villain uh, who sometimes was betrayed as not too, like a little bit of a Robin Hood. So with the Cali Cartel, you had these faces where it takes a little bit. You know, it takes a little time. Uh, maybe after the first episode, you start really kind of warm, not warming up, but nec- but really starting to invest in the Cali Cartel, and you're starting to see that you know uh, these guys are really ruthless. But especially Pacho, Pacho in here played by Alberto Armand. Man, did, he was the presence. He was the guy where you're like, you were scared of. He was the boogeyman. And I, the problem with the season was you didn't get enough of him. But as as they're trying to do, uh, keep with the, what happened in real life, even though they're taking liberties from it. He's he's doing his own thing. Uh, a lot of these Cali cartels kind of split off and do their own thing. Another presence that I, I had to take a look at one more time, if that was Wagnamora, was Pepe. Uh, Pepe what is the guy who's in New York, who is kind of overseeing New York. And this guy is, there's one particular scene with this guy that had me had me laughing a little bit. Uh, a lot of this season was a little bit more of a humorous kind of season than the past two seasons. I think the a little wacky, a little bit like the especially the two DE agents who are working with um, Pena. Those guys are kind of comical. The one guy looks like Jim from The Office, honestly. But going back for Pepe. In New York, him doing his gangster ways in the time that they were uh, at, and him. There was one particular scene that has to do with kind of like the the salon, and I thought that scene was pretty, pretty good. I thought that scene was pretty good with Pepe, you know, the, introducing him, what kind of guy this pe- this guy uh, Pepe is. Funny thing though is Gabriel Iglesias makes a cameo in here, and I am sorry, I could not take him seriously at all. There's supposed to be this kind of like back and forth playing chicken with him and Pepe, but he, 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 just seeing Gabriel Iglesias in a serious role, he's not. Ne- he should never ever play serious roles. I'm just saying. So moving on from Pepe, I mean, there's a lot of these dots. You know, uh, we have Gilberto, who is the head of the Cali Cartel. And you have his brother, Miguel. And this was the interesting dynamic. I think this is where I really got into the season was these two. These two brothers kind of like, you know, building this this empire. And something happens along the way where one of the brothers has to really is losing it. One of the brothers starts losing it towards uh, the middle and the end of the season. So, uh, but I did like this cat, Gilberto. Gilberto, uh, Gilberto ugh, sorry if I butchered his name a little bit. Gilberto was definitely a guy who was flat. Flashy. He kind of reminded me of the Bee Gees, honestly. He, he's a guy who's flashy. He uh, He's a guy who has a level head, though. I, I kind of, uh, li- I definitely like this character.
during the season because this dude had a level head. I really loved how he told his son that he did not want him in the business. I love that motto. I love that kind of like him saying that no kids, you know, let them, no, none of our kids should be allowed in this business. I loved his game plan. So the game plan for the Cali Cartel is basically build your empire in or get as much money as you can in six months, and then they're going to turn themselves in to the authorities. Uh, they struck a deal with them. So that's what this whole thing is really about, is this deal, is this uh, waiting for six months, but along those six months, things don't go according to uh, Gilberto's plan. So what I like too was his brother Miguel. Miguel is a quiet man. You know, he seems to what he wants, he takes, uh, but quietly, so to speak. I mean, he took uh, one of the guys that um, wife, which was kind of crazy, and that situation was crazy. But the dude had a presence, but a quieter kind of presence, you know. So you got to beware of the people who are the quietest. And I really did like him when he got a little bit better in the middle and then at the end. That's where he really started kind of striving. And he saw the conflict between him and his brother, including, I hated though, absolutely hated his son could not stand David. I wanted this little fucker to die the moment I saw him. David was such a piece of shit in here. He was a psychopath. It actually reminded me of The Last Dawn, if you ever seen that miniseries that used to be in USA. Uh, I believe it was Dante. His name was, yeah, I believe his name was Dante, and he was a little psychopath, and I feel like David is the exact same way. David is just trying, he, he's a fuck-up, all right? He's a fuck-up in the season, and he's just trying to earn his daddy's love. And we know that Gilberto told his son, the lawyer, like, you cannot be involved in this. So he, he already said that, like, his his no children, no kids involved in this cartel business. But David is so eager to be in this business and to help his father and to uh, help his uncle. Like, it's absolutely, but he's just, the things he does in the season, he's the real, like, kind of villain in here. He's he's just a piece of shit, honestly. And his rivalry with Jorge, that's what was were the intense moments in this season, was him and Jorge going at it. And Jorge is the head of security or one of the head of security for the cartels. That's what I loved about this season, was really focusing on how these guys knew the ins and outs, when, uh, how they knew when the DEA was on them, how they knew uh, when people were about to kill them, is because Jorge and his head security were the ones that were the behind-the-scenes man. They were the ones that were telling them, this is what happens, and this is what we got, this is the intel we have. He's the intel team. And Jorge in this season, um, it's a mixed bag. I like him. Yeah, I don't like him because he's a fool. He made his own decisions. He's like he's he's in a bad spot. He's in a bad spot because whatever he does, he might die. And for him, that was his own fault. It was his own fault getting his children and his wife kind of in this danger that he's in. But I do like him because he, you could see his eyes. The actors, the acting in this guy Jorge's eyes is sincere. He does. He's he's seen how crazy it's starting to get uh, working with the Cali cartel. So he. It's a mixed bag with this guy, but um, it's so interesting that this season is really playing the Intel game, which I really appreciate because we didn't get too much of that in the uh, with Pablo Escobar. You know, we got his, of course, like his little like Viceros in Game of Thrones. We got people telling him what's going on, you know, the people telling them, but with the Cali Cartel, they're smarter, they have actual, like, legit head of security kind of people, audio, uh, tap phones like th that was the real interesting part of this season this season by i think it just wasn't as great as maybe the first two seasons but was freaking solid it still delivered in all fronts acting uh plot um characters uh how how what they go through i mean there was parts where i was gripping on the edge of my seat because i didn't know what was going to go down i don't know what was going down i don't know the true history of the cali cartel and stuff but there was uh, three like three crazy intense scenes that really got me uh th that's what narcos does they're able to create these the, these intense scenes uh you don't know which way it's going to go you think it's going to go this way but it actually goes another way so that's what i really appreciate for season three uh, i think it looks beautiful 
beautiful. Once again, the music's always great. The uh, situations that they are able to to do in this season to make and make it realistic as possible was great. I mean, I absolutely loved this season. I binged it in one day. I think it's a slow start, but it starts really picking up when things start to fall. And man, when it falls, it falls. There's a lot, of course. There's a lot of deaths. There's a lot of twists. There's a lot of backstabbing. Once again, that you get from you know this is a cartel. This is a drug trafficking, uh, narcotics, and these are people. These are dangerous people that you can't necessarily you can't trust at all. You really can't. Uh, so I mean, everything that I wanted from season three, I got. The only thing I wanted was more of a bigger presence of maybe one character, one main villain. But I got really kind of like four of them. But with David included, uh, that guy was such a piece of crap. <laughs> like I really hate that guy i didn't know what this kid was gonna do because he was just a kid so a uh, narco season three i think it's up there with uh, season one and season two i don't think it's better but it's close it's close because it really starts picking up towards maybe the third episode second episode onward because there's a lot of great things to like about narco season three and i enjoyed one it was one hell of a ride and i enjoyed every minute of it i don't know if there's going to be a season four but if there is i'm back at it but i'm i would be happy if they stopped it here as well but narcos delivered in all fronts i do love uh everything that went on with it i do love of course uh javier pascal's performance as uh, Pena, Pena once again delivers and all friends for, as one of the good guys. I think Pena is the one that had to carry the show, but it wasn't necessarily him carrying the show. It was a lot of the cartel as well. So it was a great balance in this season, and I really appreciate everything that was going on in here. So I want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel, The Two Geeks Review, as we have more content on the way. Uh, like the video if you like it, and comment below. Love to hear you guys' thoughts on what happened this season and what did you were you feeling it were you not feeling it do you think the pablo escobar's presence was needed in this season even though you know he's gone but thank you guys and until next time